Hello, everybody, and welcome to Products on Parade. Um, it feels like that title needs fanfare. I don't know. I am Tracy, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher, or the paper pusher, as I am known on socials. On the socials. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a couple minutes late, and I will give everybody a chance to get on as well. Uh, I thought it was a good idea to let the dog out for a quick pee before I started the live. Forgetting that we have fresh snow and that, oh my goodness, does the dog love snow. So couldn't get him to come back in. Yes, now he's back in. And, oh, look at this. I just remembered to mute the thing. Uh, no sooner do we get back in here. Hello, Nicole. Um, then the neighbor across the street has the nerve to think it's okay to shovel his driveway and Rascal has to bark at him to let him know that it is his street. So I think that's settled down now. I think Rascal has gone off to go back to sleep. Um, one never knows what will happen in the next few minutes. But we are here and perfectly timed for lunchtime to talk about talk about the taco fiesta set. I will tell you, just like on a personal note, I love tacos. I can have tacos at every meal. In a crust, crunchy shell, in a round shell, in a soft shell, in a salad, over rice, just in a bowl, leftover, it does not matter. I love tacos. Uh, it also turns out that this set is perfect for me because I love puns, I love to color, and I love to fussy cut. I had so much fun playing with this set. Um, this when I when I get a new set and I start to like I gotta play. Um, I usually just like punch a bunch of people's pieces out or die cut a bunch of pieces, whichever it happens to be, so that I have like lots of things to start with. So, and then I put them in this little case, so they're always there. So you see how many little pieces I have cut and colored and had so much fun. With? These are just the leftovers. <laughs> I got a ton of them out, and when you see the one card that I did. And how many pieces I used. Uh, our guard dog has come racing back into the room, so let's hope for the best. Um, <laughs> this I started with so many of them, and I, there's more cards to be made. I just was having so much fun. Anyways, Taco Fiesta. So I'm going to show you some cards I made, but I'm not just going to show you. I'm also going to tell you some stuff. So look, we got ourselves a downright show and tell for Product Parade today. Because as I was going through some of these cards, I thought, I wonder if people know how I did that. I wonder if people know how. So I'm going to show you a few little things on the last couple projects of what I did. Just so, in case you don't know, now you do. Oh, that's great. So the dog has decided to jump up and is now half standing on me. Okay. Oh, the fun of lives. So our first card. Uh, okay. One other, one other thing to warn you about. I know, right? I, I'm like... So easily influenced, Nicole. I think tacos, I had tacos for supper last night, funny enough, and we'll talk with salad. Uh, and there's leftovers, which is good because as soon as I'm done, you know what I'm having. Oh, okay. So you're going to notice a bit of a theme. This is the Dandy Designs DSP, which is a lot of Ds, um, that you can get in the celebration rewards, right? So spend $120, you get this huge pack of this paper. And it is a good thing that it is a huge pack. I love this paper and I have used it for so many things and you will notice I have used it on an awful lot of these cards because it is bright and fun as our tacos so yeah here's the first of many cards you will see with this paper on it um <laughs> hello Tamara <laughs> um so yeah so this is our first card and I just started you know sort of small get a little bit of paper a little bit of die cuts off we go then I decided we're at the party <laughs> It's party time. So again, more of the same DSP um, or cutouts. Uh, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. I kept saying that every time I staffed it. At one point, my son was in the other room and he's like, would you stop? Nope, every time I staffed it, I had to go, holy guacamole. This is our background stamp, the hand-drawn dots, I want to call it. That's what I am going to call it. It may not actually be what it's called. And all I did, my, my plan was to have more like void spaces like this. So I just basically colored it with a bunch of our stamp and write markers, slapped the paper on it, stamped it. And I wanted kind of a confetti background. I'm a very good color. I overachieved a little bit, but I still like it. So yeah, barky time. Now this last weekend, we had a very fun demonstrator event. So you're gonna see a couple of these cards again. Um, 
because we had some challenges. Why did that all of a sudden just go fuzzy? We had some challenges. One of them was this fun fold. And it is fun. Um, so yes, there is a smaller chili pepper in this set, but my nephews like things really spicy. So I thought, um, if my tacos are bright, I think you're making them wrong. Well, when you put all the colors and tomatoes and lettuce and uh, green onions and salsa, and I have this uh, cilantro lime sauce, I will throw in a plug there, uh, the No Frills in Mournville. Um, it's just President's Choice brand and it is cilantro lime crema. Oh, so good. So it's nice and bright and white. Anyways, um, I digress. Yes, so I put the huge one on there because it was very spicy. That was that was my, <laughs> there's always a thought path. Sometimes nobody else can follow it but me, but there was one. So that's one with the fun fold. And again, just, I like to snap my inside. Um, I like to color, but in this case, I did not. And I have an entire card where, well, almost an entire card where I didn't color the pieces in. Now, um, this is actually for someone whose birthday was yesterday, so I'm a little behind. So I'm just gonna stretch out the celebration for her because we have something made with different DSP. <laughs> this is actually a card base, I think from the thankful kit, but I envisioned that this pinata and stuff had to come out of the pinata, right? Because that's what happens with pinatas. So I made it into a shaker card. So it's not exactly all falling out, but same idea. Little bit of fringe, because hey, it's a party. And uh, a slightly different color palette too, too. Lots of fun. Okay, so last weekend, fun event, many challenges. One of the challenges was to use scraps. Okay, have I got scraps? Um, but I have lots of scraps of this particular DSP because maybe I've been using it a little bit. <laughs> so there we go. It's more dandy designs. Now, if you ignore the fact that the senior cacti is there, um, I didn't color any of these images. I just simply took my basic gray uh, ink pad and stamped them over top of strips of paper. And I love the way it turned out. In my head, I'm like, oh, this will work. It did. I was so happy with this one. But yes. I also have a little dude. I'm pretty sure this card would still work. Um, not with a big thumb in the way, but without senior top or senior cacti on it. See, I think it would still work. Now, I do like to challenge myself. So next challenge was, uh, could you make a card without DSP? I do love the DSP, but yes, of course I can make a card without DSP. Instead, I'll just load it up with a gazillion pieces that I cut out. So again, you see it in your head and then you make it and you hope it for the best. This card turned out so well, like I was so happy with how it turned out. And yep, I did use a fair number of pieces. So remember how I told you how many I had left over? Look how many of you I've used already. Look how many I used on this card alone. So yeah, if you like to cut and color, boom, there you go. I'm pretty sure you could make this card by masking these pieces, but way more fun to cut and color. So, and, and look, no DSP. Now, my other challenge to myself was um, make sure you use every stamp in the set. So I have, uh, in various <laughs> different ways, used all of these. Um, I didn't use all of the faces. I think I used three of the faces by the time I was done. And there's four little faces in there. Um, you might not have seen these little candy things, but they're on the inside of the, of the pinata card. Um, so I was, I was only left with one more that I needed to use. The one that says, you spice up my life. So, okay, we need a spicy card. I give you Senor and Senorita Chile Pepper. <laughs> um, yeah, so much fun. Couple side notes. One of my absolute favorite color combinations is crumb cake, cherry cobbler, and white. So I went totally off all of the other colors. I did not use any DSP and I used up the last one. Um, also, remember, we have these, oops, I have no idea which direction to go in, adorable little heart-shaped pearls. And yes, I am all about putting things in threes, but there is two chili peppers, there is two hearts. So there you go. Um, this is the Sweet Sorbet in color glimmer paper or some such name. That, that's more of a description than probably the actual name, but you get the idea. And I did try it with DFP and white paper behind, but I didn't like it as much. This is the, this is the version that I really liked. So um, 
I know you're sitting out there and the comments are delayed. So maybe I'll see it eventually, but I know you're sitting out there saying to yourself, but Tracy, there's only one step. How did you get the peppers to go in two different directions? Well, my friends, well, let me tell you. So I did a video last year about doing the mirror technique. And I highly recommend, it's under the stamp Rouse video. And I highly recommend for most times that you're gonna do the mirror technique to use your stamp Rouse. You will get a much better image. You will have the opportunity to hit more than once. Uh, you're less likely to smudge. It is still the way to go. But for this card, I'm gonna put it back here so it's in screen. Um, it was very simple. And because I knew I was going to cut out senior to chili pepper, um, it didn't really matter. So I'm gonna show you how quickly you can make this card. I'm not gonna make the whole card, but how quickly you can make this little mirror technique to make this card. So here's our memento, because we're gonna color with our blends. And here is Senor Chili Pepper. Now I need the other one to go the other direction. So all I did was using our silicone mat, which is a must, must, must have in the, uh, the crafting world. It is meant to be, I think it was in originally intended to be for, um, like just your adhesives, right? Uh, things don't stick to here if you're gluing, you can, but there are so many more uses to this thing. And one of them happens to be the mirror technique. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink up. Thank you for the love. Um, all I'm gonna do is ink up my stamp and I'm gonna stamp here and I'm gonna go straight down and straight up. And I'm gonna be very careful not to like slide it around, which it does very easily slide around. I'm also gonna close that so I don't stick my fingers in it. And then I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I'm just gonna put it down and I'm gonna make one little pass because if you rub too much, you're gonna move your paper. And then I'm gonna very carefully pick it straight up. Ta-da. If I could focus, you'd be all be like, woo. Now, the trick with the mirror technique is you never get quite as dark an image as you do on the original. And then before I stick my piece of paper in it and then stick it somewhere else, I'm just gonna, here's the beauty of the silicone mat. Boom, cleaned. So I'm wiping the ink off of there and I'm just gonna keep it there because I want a color on it. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter. Um, if I was using the Stamparatus, I could do it a couple more times. Uh, because I want a little bit cleaner edge, I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm really quickly gonna go on the part that's lighter. And I cannot believe how well I followed that line given that this is live. Actually, this one's a little bit lighter too. Oh my goodness. It was all meant to be my friends. Look at that. So now, again, if it'll focus, now I've just added a little bit more and now I got the chili peppers going in two different directions. Now, even if it was a little fuzzy, it wouldn't really matter because like I said, <laughs> I'm coloring with my blends, which I like to go with the darker one first and I like to stay a little bit back from the edge, especially because I never give it time to dry. And I'm just gonna put in a few little highlights. And then I'm gonna take my, young, my younger one, <laughs> my lighter one, yeah. And in this case, quite honestly, I could just go like this and not even bother with the line because I'm about to cut it out, but. I go closer to my line. Uh, you, you wanna try not to hit the line because it will, or it could um, bleed a little bit and smudge and you don't really want that. But as you'll notice, it doesn't really matter on this card because like I said, I'm gonna cut it out. So I'm not gonna watch, make you watch me paint for you this. Uh, the other trick to the fussy cutting, why does that keep going out of focus, is to move the paper, not the scissors. And you will, it is much easier on your hand and you will get a much smoother, cut out of the thing and it's way more fun, which is why I find coloring and fussy cutting so therapeutic. Anyways, you get the idea, right? So even if the edge was a little bit fuzzy, fuzzy, I have just fussy cut it and cleaned up the edge a little bit. So that's how I got my two things, color them, cut them, pop them on the card, senor, e senorita, a chili pepper. And why am I sounding like that? I don't know, lack of sleep maybe. Okay. So I have one more project to show you and one more technique to show you. <laughs> My final project. That's right, I wrote a book. Did I not mention that? <laughs> oh, if only. Under my pseudonym of <laughs> Diana Cavalton. Um, all these are such good books. On a side note, I am too impatient to wait for paperbacks. I do not like hardcovers. Um, I was reading one once and fell asleep while reading and dropped it on my head and it hurt. So I, I have a thing against hardcovers, but I cannot usually wait to get the trade paperbacks. So I read on my iPad when it comes out digitally, but I always have the trade paperback. 
Um, and this time I got totally like thrown off because I was so engrossed in reading it on my, yes, I thought you might like that, Nicole. Um, I was so engrossed with reading it on my iPad that when I got to the last page, because in a, in a book, when you get close to the end, right, you know that, oh my God, look how much is left. But I was on my iPad and I'm flipping pages and all of a sudden I flipped the page and it, and it was over, the book was over and I was just, I didn't see it coming. I had read it too fast. There were, I have, you have to wait years for the next in the series. It was a very traumatic day. So paperbacks are always best if you have the patience to wait for them. But anyways, what I was gonna show you was a bookmark. <laughs> this just happened to be the closest book because it's the last, the newest one I bought. So here's my little bookmark. And the reason it is actually in a book is because it has magnets on it. And if you don't have paper between your magnets, they stick together and sometimes you end up pulling them right back off your project. So I happened to see this. I'm pretty sure it was Sarah and Shelly during our, that's the founder of the company, who's the mom and the daughter is the CEO now, um, when they were doing their very entertaining live presentation. I'm pretty sure it was them that showed us how to make this little thing. So I will take the book I wrote. I put lots of years of my time into that one, so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> put that over there without knocking everything down. So here is my bookmark. Now I'm going to show you how I made this bookmark because I made this bookmark using window sheet using this die. Now do you notice that this die makes a cutout that long? Right? This is the die I used and that's how long it makes a cutout. But look how long my window sheet is. So it occurred to me that do people know that you can stretch a die? I'm also going to show you how to do it with a book. So here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that on the screen, but rascal, you should use a, this little set to make. Oh, I should. And actually, I could make a super long one. Um, I'm just going to show you really quickly how to do this. But now, challenge accepted, Nicole. Uh, watch for the post later. <laughs> um, OK, so yes, the dog has found a piece of he's like forever in the recycle bin. His favorite sport is taking recycle out. Um, and whatever he's found is very crunchy and it's making a whole lot of noise. So we're just gonna see if we can go through. Okay, so quick lesson in die cut machines. They work based on making the proper sandwich. So in this case, the proper sandwich is these three layers, right? If I'm gonna die cut with this machine. Now, for the mini machine, the trick to getting it to work and be your friend is to offset at the top, right? I don't know if it's just because it's a smaller machine, there's less room for the rollers to grab, Whatever it is, if you line everything up, it will not grab it. But if you offset it just a little bit, it grabs. But because this is not a full sandwich here, it's not going to cut anything that's there. Same as at this end. There's not a full sandwich. It's not going to cut. This is the sweet spot. Where all of them line up, that's where it's going to cut. So using that theory and taking advantage of that theory, this is how you extend your dies. So I'm going to put my piece of paper in. And I'm going to... I'm going to do it the right way though. So I have to, I keep doing this backwards. Um, let's go. Hey, you know, I'm give or take because I have no idea because I didn't actually measure. I want this long. So let's go about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this die, but I'm only going to cut this much of the die. Oops, I should maybe get back on screen, right? I don't want to cut this part. I don't want to cut this end off because I'm going to, I'm going to move the die and make it twice as long. So if this is what I want to do, then all I have to do for my first cut is make sure, this is so much easier to do when you're not trying to do it on camera, is to make sure that my sandwich only goes where I want it to cut. So I don't want to cut here, so don't put the sandwich there because it won't cut where there's not three layers of sandwich. So I'm going to take this off screen because I can't see for nothing trying to do it where I'm showing you. Okay. So this die starts to go in as a curve. So I want it to stop basically right at that curve. So I'm going to put it in. I actually don't know if I can get it this way. Normally I would do it the other way. But let's just see if this works. And I'm going to, yep, yeah, I think it's going to work. Nope, it's not going to work. Slide. Okay, so there's your lesson. The, the trick with the mini machine and do not have a super long piece of paper because if it's hanging out it doesn't work. I should have trimmed that off to begin with. Okay. So let's try that again. Only this time. How about we do it right? Okay. So I want 
this is where it's the weird because I got to do it upside down. Um, I want just before the curve ends is where I want to go. So I am going to put this in. And I'm going to cut it out. And it worked perfectly when I did it the last time. But of course, why would it work when I'm on live? That would just be too easy. Just use the bigger machine. The bigger machine is less likely to slide around on my table too. But I wanted to be able to show you this. Uh, that's the other thing to be aware of with the little mini machine. Um, unless everything is like 100% perfectly lined up. I've noticed it does shoot out like a bullet. <laughs> Uh, when you die cut. Okay, so I've got my partial cut, right? And there's all sorts of techniques you can use, paper, all sorts of techniques you can use where you partially cut through a piece. So it, it only cut to here because that's where the sandwich ended. So now what I want to do is I want to cut the rest and I'm going to fold right on this line, right? But I want to cut so that this is twice as long. So I'm going to put my sandwich back in again and I'm going to cut this piece again so you have to line it up one way and then do it the other way. Now, here's where, I should put this down. This will be your best friend. So this is stamping up masking paper. And you'll notice when I did the other video, I would have used post-it notes. The thing with post-it notes though, is they're only sticky on one end. Masking tape, or masking paper, sorry, is sticky, um, the whole piece is sticky. So it will hold way better than just the little post-it note does. So I'm gonna line this all up where I wanna go. And I'm going to put down, and when I put my, my masking paper down, I'm gonna put it down, basically, I'm holding this in place, but for my own personal use, I'm also gonna put it where I want the, where I want the plate to end, like where I want the cutting to end, because when I go to line this up afterwards, it's gonna be that much harder to see anything. So this way I have one more thing showing me that this is where I want the die to stop, right? Because if I go farther, I'm gonna cut more than I want to. And if, you, if you're not sure or you can't see as well, then pull it back just a little bit because you're better to have to do a, like a little bit of a trim with your scissors than to cut too far. So I put my die down, I've stuck it there so it stays in place. I made my sandwich and my plate is ending where I want the cut to end because I don't want to recut this. I do not want to cut a big hole with this piece. And I'm going to put it through one more time. I use this mini. Um, when the plates were new, it shot the one plate out and it went straight at my iPad, which is always sitting like just off screen you know, on my desk. And uh, I thought for sure I had broken my brand new iPad, but it did not. So I'm always, I'm always, I, I'm usually very careful about that. This last one, I wasn't paying attention. So luckily it didn't do anything to the iPad, which is once again sitting there. Okay, so now I stopped cutting right there. Here's my other little top tip for you, Tracy's top tip. Uh, no matter if you're using a sticky or you can buy this in like tape form or use the Stampin' Up! paper, which I like, the masking paper. Don't just rip this thing off. Because it's it's um, posted also makes a tape you can cut as long as you want. Um, yes, I had thank you, Carol. I had um, and hi. I had lots of trouble with the washi tape because you put it down. It's meant to be repositionable, but if you pull it too fast, you rip the paper. But I also found that you couldn't use it as many times and still maintain the sticky. I do like the post-it tape, um, and it's about an inch wide, I think. And yeah, you can make long strips of it. Um, and no matter which one you are using, like I said, they're all meant to be repositionable or to pull off. Don't ever just rip because you, you can pull your stuff, your project right back off again. I find the best way and the most likely way of not pulling your paper up, because sometimes you're going to do this after you've stamped and you don't want to rip the top layer off, is to roll it. Pull it back and roll it. And you want to go like just a bit more slowly. And see this one, I did not take any of the tacky out of it. And so like it's biting me. See, there we go. I just I just pulled up some of my paper. So I probably should have taken some of the tacky off of this paper, but lucky for me, I'm gonna cover it up. And why should it go perfectly well for a live? Because then you guys wouldn't learn from experience. My experience, it's so much better when it's my paper that I have to replace instead of yours. Um, so yeah, I won't fight with that. Okay, so I did, I was being cautious and I got like one side is pretty good. The other side is not white. But that's okay, because all I have to do is reach in with my snips and 
give it a little trim on that tiny little piece. But it is better than if I had cut a big chunk out of here. We don't want that. So now I've now just taken my die and basically doubled it in length. So I could get my scoring or my trimmer out with my little scoring blade on it, but I've got so much stuff on my table now it's not gonna fit. Something else I discovered, and I apologize to people who do not have this. Stampin' Up! had this a couple of years ago and it's the little mini guillotine and it is so handy. But if you don't have the trimmer or you don't have room on your desk for the trimmer, it works quite nicely, as does a ruler. I also have on my desk this little metal ruler that works like a charm. But if you take a sharp edge, which probably the edge of your desk also works, and you line it up where you want it to fold, and you just give it a good push. Now make sure you're only pushing on the paper and not on the blade, because that would make a lot of sense. Um, and there, I've made my score line. And I'm going to fold this guy in half, and I'm going to give him a little, little bit of a bone folder. And because I did not line that up perfectly, I ended up with a little bit of a little bit of a fuzzy edge there. So I'm just going to trim that off. There we go. So now I've got the basic. Um, and yes, I will fix this. I'm just going to make you watch me do it. Um, I also find that the colored cardstock is easier to rip than the white and the very vanilla. The very white and very vanilla seem to have a different, I don't know, layer coating, something to them. There's some slightly different makeup and they're less likely to rip than the colored stuff. But anyways, there's my basic extended out. Uh, where'd my thing go? There we go. So now all I wanna do is I wanna put my little magnets on and decorate it up. So die cuts can do that for you. Did you know you can do the same thing with a punch? Why do I have a piece of white paper on my desk? Not sure. Oh, I was going to show you. This is my little package of, <laughs> of magnets I got. Isn't it the cutest little box of magnets? Um, I just got them on Amazon. And I, the ones I have are one millimeter thick. I don't want to say about six millimeters. I guess across in diameter. So here's the other thing you can do. You can use your punch and get the same effect. That's why I have that white piece of paper there. So normally with the punch, you put your paper in like this, you go down, and yes, you don't, don't be wasteful and stick the entire thing in the middle like I just did. And this is what you get. Now, if I wanted to make a bookmark with this, folding this in half would be a very small bookmark. So take a piece of paper. I was doing black and white for, for contrast to make it more dramatic. So I made this paper thinner than the punch, right? So that it will fit in the punch the way I want it to. So now instead of putting the paper in like this, I'm just gonna stick the paper through the punch and I'm just gonna cut one end at a time. So there's little lines in here and I just have to kind of feed it in there. There we go. Now when I'm lining this up and here's where black paper does not help. So I'm gonna do this where I can actually see it first. Okay, so I'm doing this and I don't know how easy you're gonna be able to see but I want to make sure I have the same gap on the top and the same gap on the bottom because now I've got my thing straight and I'm going to punch. Get rid of that piece. Now I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, and this is what we're going to need. If we're going to punch an entire thistle flower on here, I'm going to need this thing to be about this long. So let's see if I can do this. I was just, this was just a scrap of paper, but I'm going to make it this long just to see. So same thing, I'm going to feed it in this way. I'm going to look at it where I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to make sure that my gap is lined up. Let's do that again. Pull this out. I'm going to punch it. My little piece didn't fall back out. So now I've taken a punch that is normally this long, and I have made it this long. <laughs> it looks like I'm making like a belt for something. So I can't. I can't use my. Just gonna have to push that button way for this one because I don't actually have any idea how, how long this piece is. So I'm going to measure it and I'm going to find out that it is oh, seven and three quarters. Okay, so I have a seven and three quarters. Why do I have to do such hard math? Okay, so half of that would be four. And but I'm lessing a quarter, but I only want half of a quarter, so that's actually an eighth. So I'm, if I if I've done my poorly thought out math. That's the halfway mark, and I'm going to score it. I'm going to put that back. And then 
Oh, oh, oh look at me go. Um, so one thing doesn't work, but the other thing does. And then I'm just going to take my phone folder to make it. I got this for that slightly crooked. And there we go. Now I've got a much bigger, um, and I'm going to I'm going to make a little um, the, the the huge one. I will show you. Uh, Nicole is referencing the sneak peek of the other projects. Oh, hello, Jennifer. Um, this is the thistle one, and there's a this is a huge stamp. Plus, there's a die that goes with it, but there's a much smaller one that's about this long. So yes, totally appropriate for the Outlander book. I'm going to see if I can put that little dude on there. But anyways, <clears throat> the whole point was to show you how you could extend your stamps and your dies, and that's what we've done. So I hope that was helpful. I hope uh, that wasn't everybody going, oh, come on, we all knew that. So yes, the, um, oh, so close to my half hour mark, I went over. Um, so yeah, make yourself a bookmark on a spicy card. Um, no DSP, oops, I got envelopes here screwing me up. No DSP, no coloring. Shaker card, fun fold. I will put pictures of these all up afterwards. Barty and simple and have yourself a fiesta. Now, uh, I hate to cut and run, but you know, all of this talk of tacos has made me hungry and I actually have leftover stuff from last night's dinner. So I'm going to make a taco. I hope you will go and play with your taco fiesta stamp set. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining me. Um, there's a great delay in the comments here. So if I have missed anything, I will come back afterwards and, and um, have a look and answer any questions or whatever. But thank you all for joining me for Products on Parade, Taco Fiesta. I should show you. And stamping paper and what else did I use? All sorts of things. Um, in case you were wondering, here, I'll tell you real quick. The Something Fancy dies is where I got this die from. In case you're wondering which set that came out of. And the punch, quite honestly, first one I saw, grabbed off the thing, no idea what it is or if it's current. But there's going to be many punches that will work. So let's just pretend like I know what that was. But let's let's get back to the start of the show. Taco Fiesta. And as the, uh, the meme says, first we Fiesta, then we Siesta. So I'm going to go have some lunch and possibly a nap. And then I will take pictures of all of these lovely cards. And... I will post them for you so you can uh, see them without me moving them so quickly. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful Friday and a fantastic weekend and enjoy the fresh snow. Thanks, everyone. Bye.